Uh, but but the, the Heritage Foundation is a nonprofit organization that works on public policy, and I think it's an important part of how D.C. functions and operates. Uh, we'll continue to have important conversations in the Republican Party with a whole host of think tanks from the right and from the left as we craft public policy. Uh, that's the way the city works. And uh, again, I'm not going to be the person who serves as the spokesperson for the Heritage Foundation. I don't have any affiliation. Sounds like you're distancing yourself from those comments that talk of political violence. Look, Chris, and I certainly don't think political violence is justified. That's certainly actually not what I think that Kevin Roberts Let was me, saying to begin with. But again, have him have him on, yeah. on, on your program to defend what he Let said. Me, uh, and I think that's the best thing to do. Let me ask you specifically about Project 2025. What's up, YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today, guys, we're back again to a new video. Today, we're going to check out J.D. Vance humiliates Christine Walker when she, she tries insulting him on live TV. Okay, this is gonna be amazing. I would love to take the video out to you guys. And uh, I really, really, really like JD Vance a lot. Like I'm a big fan of him ever since the natural um picked him as the VP. <laughs> right now, this video is gonna be amazing. Uh, I just want to watch how it turns out to be. I'm actually I'm actually curious how he actually humanates um you mean it's Christian Walkers. Let's get right to today's video. Joining me now is Senator J.D. Vance, a top finalist to be former President Trump's running mate. Senator Vance, welcome back to Meet the Press. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for being here. I want to talk to you about the immunity ruling and the implications. This is what Donald Trump said last year about wanting to target his political opponents. Take a listen. I will appoint a real special prosecutor to go after the most corrupt president in the history of the United States of America, Joe Biden, and the entire Biden crime family. Senator, if former President Trump were to win, if you were to be his vice president, would you support him appointing a special prosecutor to go after his political enemies, the Bidens? Well, first of all, Kristen, I find it interesting how much the media and the Democrats have lost their mind over this particular quote. Donald Trump is talking about appointing a special prosecutor to investigate uh, Joe Biden for wrongdoing. Joe Biden has done exactly that for the last few years and has done far more in addition to that to engage in a campaign of lawfare against his political opposition. I think what Donald Trump is simply saying is we ought to investigate the prior administration. There are obviously many instances of wrongdoing. Uh, the House Oversight Committee has identified an, a number of corrupt business transactions that may or may not be criminal. Of course, you have to investigate to find out. So I think Donald Trump's saying, look, let's do the basic work of investigating wrongdoing is a totally reasonable thing for him to do. And frankly, the Biden administration has done far worse. So if you think that what Donald Trump is proposing is a threat to democracy, isn't what Biden has already done a massive threat to our Sen system of law and government. Senator, just to be very clear, though, Joe Biden didn't appoint a special prosecutor. The attorney general did that. Trump was indicted by grand juries. He was found guilty by a jury of his peers in New York. But can we just go back to the core question here? Would you support him taking such an action? It sounds like you're saying, yes, you would. <laughs> I would absolutely support investigating prior wrongdoing by our government. Absolutely, that's what you have to have in a system of law and order, Kristen. But I have to reject the premise here. Uh, Joe Biden appointed the Attorney General Merrick Garland, who, of course, answers to Joe Biden, can be fired by mm -hmm. Joe Biden. So the idea that the Biden administration has nothing to do with the appointment of the special prosecutor, I think, completely betrays an understanding, a misunderstanding of how but, our system of government actually but, works. But there's, and of but, course, and of course, Kristen, we we ha we we have to say, we have to make this point, Kristen, uh, that the prosecution of Donald Trump in New York, which I think now is fundamentally been thrown in doubt by this immunity case, it was one of the main guys was a Department of Justice official in the Biden administration who jumped ship to join a local prosecutor's office to go after Donald Trump. And yet Trump. the DOJ that told doesn't Con make you question Senator, the legitimacy of the prosecution, that's a problem. Well, Senator, that happens all the time. People are appointed from Washington. But the DOJ told Congress, testified this week Kristen, that it reviewed it happens, all... It, hold on, Senator, Are let you me really finish. saying, Kristen, Senator, Senator, it, Senator, happens, let me finish my it happens sentence, all the time? Senator, let me finish my sentence, then I'll let you finish. Hold that on. The number th let, let me just please. finish this. The go DOJ ahead. told Sorry. Congress this week it reviewed all communications since Biden took office and found no contact between federal prosecutors and those involved with that case in New York. Can you stick to the substance of the question, though? Let me just ask, because you are I just want to stick with 
this line of theory that you are laying out, which is you are saying it's not okay for Joe Biden to weaponize the Justice Department. If it's not okay for Joe Biden to weaponize the Justice Department, as you say, which there's no evidence of that, why is it okay for Donald Trump to do that? Well, Kristen, first of all, you said that it happens all the time, that the number three person in the Department of Justice jumps ship to join a local prosecutor's office to go after the president's political opponent. I don't think that's ever happened in the history of American democracy, and I don't think that we should legitimize it. Now, if Donald Trump's attorney general had this, his number two or his number three jump ship to a local prosecutor's office in Ohio or Wisconsin, and that person then went after Donald but Trump's political opposition, that's a different conversation. Sen Senator all he's suggesting is that we should investigate yeah. credible arguments of wrongdoing. That's all that Donald Trump is saying. That is not a threat to democracy. So That's merely reinforcing our system of law and True. government. Bottom line, you are okay with Donald Trump appointing a special prosecutor to go after his political enemies, which would include Joe Biden. I, you're just to button that up. It sounds like you're saying yes. Let me move on, though, to my next question. I want to talk to you about the Heritage Foundation. It's a conservative think tank in Washington. It shapes the agenda they would like to see in a Trump second term. The president said this after the Supreme Court's ruling this week. Take a look. We're in the process of taking this country back. No one in the audience should be despairing. No one should be discouraged. We ought to be really encouraged by what happened yesterday. We are in the process of the second American Revolution, which will remain bloodless if the left allows it to be. Do you support those calls for a revolution and would political violence ever be justified? Well, of course, political violence is never justified, Kristen. You'll have to ask the president of the Heritage Foundation to defend his remarks if you'd like to do that. I will say, look, the Heritage Foundation does a lot of good work. It does a lot of things that I disagree with, a lot of things that I agree with. Uh, but, but the Heritage Foundation is a nonprofit organization that works on public policy. And I think it's an important part of how D.C. functions and operates. Uh, we'll continue to have important conversations in the Republican Party with a whole host of think tanks from the right and from the left as we craft public policy. Uh, that's the way the city works. And uh, again, I'm not going to be the person who serves as the spokesperson for the Heritage Foundation. I don't have any affiliation. Sounds like you're distancing yourself from those comments <laughs> that talk of political violence. Look, Kristen, I certainly don't think political violence is justified. Mm. That's certainly actually mm. not what I think that Kevin Roberts Let was me... saying to begin with. But again, have him have him on, yeah. on, on your program to defend what he Let said. Uh, and I think that's the best thing to do. Let me ask you specifically about Project 2025 for our viewers so that they know. It's basically a policy blueprint for a second Trump presidency. It's supported by the Heritage Foundation and other conservative groups. The Biden campaign has said Project 25, quote, should scare every single American. It would give Trump limitless power over our daily lives. Among the things they are calling for is reversing approval of the abortion pill, Mifepristone. But Donald Trump says he supports access to that pill, actually. Do you support access to abortion medication as Donald Trump does? Well, Kristen, for, you asked about Project 2025, and I want to be clear here. Uh, that t Trump explicitly has said his own transition team runs the Trump transition and will run the Trump administration. Again, you have a whole host of organizations, some of which have good ideas, some of which have bad ideas, and some of which have both. And I'm sure the Trump administration will talk to a lot of people as it's crafting an agenda to bring back American manufacturing jobs, to lower inflation, and to bring peace and prosperity back to the world. That's the whole reason why me and so many others are trying to reelect Donald Trump is because the agenda actually worked. It was his agenda. Agenda, and I think it'll work again for the American people. On the question of the abortion pill, what so many of us have said is that, look, um, we, we certainly don't, the Supreme Court made a decision saying uh, that the American people should have access to that medication. Donald Trump has supported that opinion. I support that opinion. I think it's important to say that we, we actually have to have an important conversation in this country about what our abortion policy should be. Uh, Donald Trump is the pragmatic leader here. He's saying most abortion policy is going to be decided by the states. Uh, we want to make it easier and more affordable for young women and parents to have families to begin with. We want to lower housing costs, yeah. eliminate the surprise medical bills that so many families see after yeah. they have a baby. So, That's the Trump and Republican approach well, to this issue. Uh, Meanwhile, Joe Biden wants taxpayer-funded taxpayer abortion up to the moment of birth. It, it, it's so Senator, crazy to me Senator, how that, hold, the Democrats on, frame to, this as Republicans. Let, just, just let me finish, Kristen. D D Democrat, they frame Democrats as being reasonable and pragmatic, when in reality, 
Senator, Republicans are the one trying to find some common Senator, ground here. as you know, abortions, very few abortions take place later in pregnancy and almost always because there is a medical emergency. I know Trump is trying to distance himself from Project 2025, but we have to point out that a number of people who are involved with it are former Trump officials, Ben Carson, Peter Navarro, Ross Vaught, and others. But just to be clear, you support Mifepristone being accessible. Yes, Kristen, I do. But again, on the Project 2025 issue, what the media and the Democrats are trying to do is attach its most unpopular elements to the Trump administration. It's a 900 page document. I guarantee yep. there are things that Trump likes and dislikes about that 900 page document. But he is the person who will determine the agenda of the next administration. All he said very explicitly is. I am in charge yeah. of the next administration because I'm the person running for president. It's just important to make that clarification. Let me, let me ask you something uh, that caught our eye. This is something you wrote in the New York Times op-ed in 2017 about former President Barack Obama. You criticized his policies, but you also said, quote, it is one of the great failures of recent political history that the Republican Party was too often unable to disconnect legitimate political disagreements from the fact that the president himself is an admirable man. For at a pivotal time in my life, Barack Obama gave me hope that a boy who grew up like me could still achieve the most important of my dreams. For that, you write, I will miss him. And the example he set, you wrote that just days before Donald Trump was inaugurated. Do you still consider Barack Obama to be an admirable man who you miss? Well, you know, I grew up in a broken family, uh, Kristen, and I just wanted to be a good husband and dad. And certainly Barack Obama, despite my many political disagreements with him, he's clearly a good husband and a father. By the way, I'd say the same thing about Donald Trump, whose children love him. And I think this is one of the things the media often misses about Trump is how genuinely devoted he is to his family, to his grandchildren, and how part of his pro-life messaging, his fundamental pro-life view, is that we ought to make it easier for more American families to have those thriving children and, and thriving families. So uh, certainly I think we've been blessed with a lot of good examples across our country. And yeah, absolutely. Was Barack Obama a good president? No. Uh, was he a good husband and father? Yes. So he's still an admirable man? That's just what I said, Chris. <laughs> All right. Let me, I have to ask you about Veep Stakes. Of course, have you gotten the call from Donald Trump? Has he asked you to be his running mate? I have not gotten the call, Kristen, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll certainly, you know, maybe not the first person that I'd let know if that happened, but uh, we'll let the media know if I ever get that call. But most importantly, Kristen, we're just trying to work to elect Donald Trump. Whoever his vice president is, he's got a lot of good people he could choose from. It's the policies that worked and the leadership style that worked for the American people. I think we have to bring that back to the White House, and I'm fighting to try to do that. Well, here we are about a week before the Republican convention. Before I let you go, can you say unequivocally, unequivocally here and now that you will accept the results of the 2024 election no matter what they are? So long as it's a free and fair election, Kristen, of course we will. We will use constitutional processes to challenge issues if we think there are issues. But if it's a free and fair election, we will do what the Constitution well, requires. We will respect the results. And I expect those results are going to be to reelect Donald Trump. It was a free and fair election in 2020. Donald Trump took his concerns to court. He lost in court, but he still has not conceded. Do you understand that when you refuse to commit unequivocally, that feeds into people's concerns, skepticism about the nation's electoral process. Well, Kristen, I, I don't agree with that, actually. I think that feeding into people's concerns about our electoral process is that one half of America's political segment, they won't support legislation that makes it harder for illegal aliens to vote. They won't support universal voter ID in our elections, even though you have to present ID to do almost anything in this country. I think well, taking now, people's concerns yeah. seriously about election fraud Senator, is the way to Senator, reinforce security and confidence in our elections. Yeah, Senator, it's already against the law for non-citizens to vote. But just on that very point, Point. When you, when others refuse to say, yes, we will accept the election results, do you understand how that undermines people's confidence in the electoral system? But, Kristen, what I just said is I don't agree with that. What I, what I okay. think actually undermines people's confidence in the electoral system is when the media is incurious about obvious examples of problems in our electoral system. I think we've got All great right. elections, but a lot of things could be better in certain states. I want to work to make that happen so the American people have greater confidence in their elections. That's what I'll keep doing.
Senator, thank you for being here. Please come back when you get that phone call, if not beforehand. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Guys, this man is very clever. I keep on saying this every time. He's really, really smart. Donald Trump choosing him as a VP was the best decision for me, if you ask me, <laughs> because he deserves it. Like, he deserves it. Like, the woman is trying to talk over him. Like, ever since, she just wants to put weight in his mouth. And he understands her intentions. He understands her plans, her propagandas. He understands everything. And he was ready to defend himself and defend Donald Trump at the same time. Like, every time he was standing for what he believes in and what he sees to be the vision. Like, J.D. Vance is a very, very intellectual man. And he does not fall for the praise, putting weights in his mouth. The woman was just trying to make sure that he says something negative. He, he says something bad that she can use against him. She was just trying to make sure she puts weights in his mouth. And he was ready to defend every single step. This was really, really smart. Very, very clever answers. If you ask me, he had a very clever answers. Like, every time she... She first used the word of the Heritage um, Foundation. And he was like, if you want to know about the Heritage Foundation and what they really mean by the, by the statement, you can call them here yourself. You don't tell him to stand for them. No. He's, he agrees with some of the things that Heritage Foundation say and some of the things he does not agree. But if you want the clarification of what the Heritage Foundation president say, call them here yourself so they can answer and defend their statements. You don't put words in his mouth. He was very precise. And I just saw him as, wow. <laughs> he's very intellectual. Like, he's very calm, coordinated, and precise. That itself gives me goosebumps. I love how he's, he's ready to answer the question. And he does those stumbles. He, he knows what he's talking about. He knows the right from the wrong. He knows what she's trying to do. Like, I was just marveled by how he spoke vocally and how he defended himself and also Donald Trump and the entire America at large. Even the general assistance and protest, he was able to like clarify that it was a peaceful protest. It was a peaceful protest. Donald Trump never instigated war or violence or, or anything bad. Though some things happened during the protest, but Donald Trump never instigated anything bad. Like, it was very, very beautiful watching this man talk this video itself was very very amazing he actually humiliated her to shred <laughs> he embarrassed her life on tv because i was literally laughing like the way he answered her question i can see the humiliation on her face guys like i'm trying to pin this man down but he's the one pinning me down like he's the one making her to look humiliated because she's putting twisting his to see his words, even the one he talked about Barack Obama, um, se um, twenty seventeen, if he's a um humble man, he, he, he the right man, he clarified that Donald Trump is a is a good husband, a good father, but when it comes to the presidency, like he never he never um performed properly, he he performed badly, his um tenure was not good. The woman is she trying to use his words? He's talked about Donald uh, about. Barack Obama 2017 against him. And he was he was precise in his answers. Like that itself is is amazing. Like I love how he speaks and how he defends himself. This entire video was actually I love to watch. I love how he stands for Donald Trump. And I'm really glad Donald Trump picked him as his VP. That's was beautiful. JD Vance, I am rooting for Donald Trump. I am rooting for you too. Republicans, we are coming full force and we are ready. We are going to watch the election. And I pray it's free and fair. And there is no malicious way, malicious um art during the process. This was beautiful to watch. Comment down below. Think about this video. Give us a thumbs up. Share this video to as many as can. Subscribe to our channel. I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay safe. I just want a bag. Like an old lady. I'm back wood smoking. I don't own papers. Pass that 808. That don't, don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby, mama bugging. I'm so quick to hit ignore. Buku bitches in my bed. I got scales all